house in my shop, Saber CNC. Around here, they call me Router Bob. You know, we've got a very exciting video for you. We designed the RC series CNC's at ShopSaber to meet a certain market. For one thing, we wanted to make a very, very affordable CNC router that would, would perform well, but we need to keep it at a budget price. You know, maybe you just need a machine for prototyping. Maybe you're starting a small company and you need routing capability, but you don't have a lot of money to invest. The RC series is a great place for you to start. Now, let's look closer at this machine. Okay, now let's take a look at the frame structure on the RC series. As in all the Shop Saber CNC's, the base frame is a weldment. And actually, we can't really see it because of the table, but there's, there's a lot of internal supports in there that are all part of a weldment. The frame's actually made out of structural steel, just like bridges are. Now, let's look at the gantry itself. The other parts of the frame are actually the gantry supports and the gantry. And you'll notice this is all steel. This is a, a steel fabricated gantry. And if you notice, we've got a unique design here. That gives us tremendous stiffness, yet without increasing too much mass. So it's a great design for an entry level machine like this. Now let's look at what actually causes the motion. Part of the motion system on these machines is the precision contour guide rails. We use 25 millimeter guide rails and the spacing is determined by our finite element analysis software system so that everything is designed correctly. Now let's look at what actually causes the motion. Motion control on the machine is actually controlled by our precision rack and pinion system and X and Y and precision ball screw and Z. Now let's take a closer look at the Shop Saber floating drive system. You know, one of the problems that's, uh, that's inherent with virtually all rack and pinion systems is the phenomenon called backlash. Backlash is just another word for play. There has to be a little bit of play between the pinion and the rack itself so that the machine moves smoothly. Well, there, that causes a problem in some instances. Sometimes that shows an apart edge. So at ShopSaber, we developed a floating drive system to take care of that so it, it automatically adjusts that play out while you're cutting so you end up with much much better edge finishes and and part geometry is much more accurate because of that special system we developed and, you know that was all part of our FEA system and a, another interesting thing that came out of that design was the way we orient the actual racks if you notice the teeth on the racks are pointing downward so that tends to keep wood chips away from them now the last part of the drive system is actually machine control itself and let's go take a look at that. You know the final part of machine motion control is the machine control itself. We developed a Shop Saber router controller uh, based on a really really robust rock solid technology but we wanted to use that and then build a control that was easier to use. Now on this particular machine we have a Sanyo Danke micro stepper system and drives we also offer this machine with a Mitsubishi servo system if you prefer that. The control function is pretty much the same on the front end. Now, one of our goals when we designed this was to make the machine control easy to communicate with and easy for the operator. So we actually put the user interface that the operator works on in a Windows environment. So you see it on a Windows screen, then that connects back to the machine control. Uh, what that did was it made it easy to run other software on the control interface if you want to. It made it easy to connect to networks and it made it real simple to learn to use this machine. There's only one screen there and everything you need to run the machine control is there. So we made it really, really simple. Now let's go to the machine spindle and talk about that. Okay, now let's take a look at this. Uh, first off, before we look at the spindle, let's look at, at these uh, stiffeners. These stiffeners are added to, to both sides of the, of the mounting plate for the motor. And what they do is they give you more support down here at the spindle and it gives you better finishes. Now that's a direct product of finite element analysis. That's how these parts were developed. Now this particular machine has a four horsepower HSD spindle. The machine's also available as an ATC model. Something that's interesting, if you happen to be in a shop where you can only get 110 volt power, we can actually put a Porter Cable router motor on there and that lets you run the machine on 110. Now let's look at the table. This RC series machine actually has a standard MDF table. Now we put that on there because it's real easy to fix your parts if you need to machine them. All you have to do is screw them down in the MDF. Once it gets damaged, you basically just replace it and fly cut it with the machine and you have a new top. Now we also offer a T-slot top for these machines, a vacuum table, 
And we also can supply this in phenolic and aluminum if you'd like. So there's a lot of different options based on what your needs are and how much you want to invest in the machine. Now, I've been on the internet and I found a neat product and I need to make a prototype. So let's go in the office and let's look at the software and I'll show you how we're going to do this. Before we look at the product we're going to make on the Shop Saber RC4, let's talk about CNC a little bit. You know, if you just need to cut rectangles, that's very easy to do with a table saw. But when you start making curved parts, it gets more difficult. If you're doing it manually, you're going to have to use a band saw or a jig saw and sand to a line, and that's fine if you just have to make one. But if you happen to have to make a bunch of those, it's a whole lot more trouble. And I remember way back when I first started doing CNC, the thing that probably amazed me the most is that it, the machine cut curves as well as it cut straight lines. All right, now, this particular model, I really call the introduction to CNC model. And here's why. It's not a tremendously expensive machine. It has, the one we're using has a four foot by four foot table, so I can use panel materials, and I can make all kinds of neat stuff with it. So what I chose for a product for this video was to make something that used panel material and had lots of curves, and I think you're going to like it. All right, I got out on the internet and I was looking for a neat product. And the one you see on the screen here is called a KUKA chair. And it's an office chair. It's made out of 18 millimeter Baltic birch, which is a great material to deal with. And it's got a lot of intricate shapes to it and it all fits together with slots. And I thought, boy, this would be a great product. And I thought it'll probably nest real well. All right, so basically I started with the 2D drawings of each part. Then I actually created this solid model of the chair itself. So so you could kind of get a concept of what this was going to look like. And if we actually just look at a ghost view of it, then you'll see, you'll see the actual parts and you'll see how they uh, interact here. So I think that's going to be a really, really neat product to cut on the machine. You know, once again, this is kind of an introduction to CNC, so I wanted a product that, that had that complexity to it. Now, what happens is uh, I went into VCAR Pro. There's VCAR Pro and you see the parts on there. There's all the parts. And then you notice I've also added some circles here. Now, th what those are going to be is uh, they're going to be places to screw the panel down. This is going to be held with a system some of the software companies call eco nesting. It's for people that want to do panel processing that don't have a vacuum table. So, what we do on the machine table itself, we have a sacrificial top and it's going to be uh, three quarter melamine. And that's going to allow us to screw this plywood panel down on there. And so, what I've marked are scrap areas. So the first thing we'll do is we'll actually drill those holes and then screw the panel down and cut the rest of it out. Now, let's go to the next step, and the next step is applying tool pass. So let's apply tool pass to this geometry and let's watch the simulation, and then we'll take that out to the machine and we'll cut this out and see how it fits. Okay, this is a simulation VCAR Pro. Let's look at how we approach making this. Of course, as I said before, we're using this concept of EcoNest, so I'm gonna, we're going to actually attach a substrate, a scrap piece of material to the table so we don't damage the machine table. All right, that's going to be attached to the table, and then we're actually going to screw uh, this material down. This is a 48 by 48 sheet of 18 millimeter, which is like 0.71 inches thick, Baltic birch. So it's really, really good quality material. All right, so we're actually going to attach that with screws. So the first thing I need to know is where do the screws go? Well, let me show you how I did that. I came back over here, if you notice, I, I had I let the software nest all the parts, all right? And then I went into some scrap areas and I made some holes, I made some marks. So everywhere you see those little marks, uh, I'm going to put a wood screw. And the way I'm actually going to do it is, let's go back over to 3D. What I'm actually going to do is just drill those holes about a sixteenth deep. So if we simulate that, that's what it looks like. All right, so there's the holes. Now, that's going to be the first program I run. Now I'm going to use the same quarter inch bit that I'm going to cut the parts out, but that's going to be the first thing I'm going to do. Then I'm going to go over with a cordless drill and some wood screws. I'm going to screw the panel down. That's what holds everything in place, right? Then the next thing I think I'll do is I think I'll clear the pockets out. And now pockets are holes that basically, that's, these are these slots that pieces fit in. So I, I, I don't want to leave any scrap in there, so I'm just going to pocket them. I'm not going to cut the perimeter, right? So the first thing that's going to happen then, we hit the pockets it's going to machine the pockets out. And there won't be any scrap to fly out. I cut all that into chips. Okay, then the next thing I want to do is cut out the insides. Well, the insides are these holes. Holes like this, and this, and this. So I select inside. So that's what's going to happen. Now, these are tabbed. Now, here's what tab means. 
Tab means that I have a little piece of thin material that keeps it attached. And the reason I do that is because uh, I don't want those parts to move. And those tabs are triangular and they're very small and they're real easy to cut off with a utility knife. So once I get all this done, I'll just cut those tabs apart. So that takes care of those holes. Then the next thing I'm going to do the outsides. And I did those a bit different. Basically, I said, okay, I'm going to deal with these small pieces first. And the reason I wanted to do that had to do with the tabs. Because these are the tabs and I wanted to locate uh, tabs a certain way on there so that they're held in a place. I didn't want to put a tab on the outside because there's nothing attached to. So that's what that was used for. We'll close that. Let's go back to simulation and we're going to outside. We'll simulate that. Alright, so there's that. So you see where that cut. And then we'll come back through here and we'll cut the, the rest of it. So when we get done, that's our whole sheet. And so we, we basically run two programs. The first program, I'm going to drill the holes, attach it with screws. The second program, we're going to cut everything else out. The bit we're going to use is a vortex, and it's going to be a quarter-inch mortise and compression bit because that will cut that plywood, and it won't actually uh, chip it on top or bottom. We're going to go through with two passes because the material's thick, and we're going to leave tabs in the second pass. And that should be all it takes. All right, we'll get this cut out, we'll put it together, and let's see. Let's go out to the shop and, and see if these parts fit like I think they will. Okay, we're back out here in the shop at the machine. Now let me show you what we've done so far. We've taken a sacrificial board, all right, and this happens to be three-quarter inch melamine, and on top of it we actually have our 18 millimeter Baltic birch. Now, what I've done is i put a couple little pieces of double stick tape so that this just doesn't move. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to run the first program which is just going to take the bit and lightly touch it at some different places. That tells me where it's safe to put the screws in to hold the panel down. So that's going to be our first step. Before we do that, let's look at this bit a little bit closer. Let me explain to you how this thing works. Okay, this is a bit we're going to be using. This is a Vortex 3112 and it's called a compression bit. Now if you're not familiar with that term, Part of the bit is an up shear and part's a down shear. And the idea is that, that uh, because the cutting forces are toward the center, center of the panel, they don't chip, all right? Now, it's also a, a different kind of compression bit. It's called a mortising. And mortising simply means that the up shear part is limited. So it's about 3 sixteenths. Uh, now we'll use that bit. That will allow us to actually uh, cut through the plywood. Now we're first going to use it in our little drilling operation to mark the holes. Then we're actually going to go through and, and cut the parts out. But that's a Vortex 3112. Now let's go ahead and fit, put the tool back in the machine and we're almost ready to run our chair. Okay, we've got the router bit mounted in the spindle. Now before we actually machine uh, this chair, let's take this dust route off. That, it's going to make it easier to see the machining. You would normally run this with your dust collector. Now, there's one thing that's left once we put a tool in, and that's a process called touching the tool off. Basically, that's telling the machine control where the top surface of the material is. Now, we can actually do that manually, or in our case, we're going to use our automatic tool touch-off feature. Now, that is easy. Okay, now we use the router to actually mark our screw locations. We've got the screws through the material down into the substrate. Now we're ready to cut the chair out. Let's get at it.
All right, this came out really, really good. All the parts look good. You know, there's a little scrap piece here that's free. I'm going to do a little test here. Oh, that fits perfect. So now, that really came out good. The parts look great. We cut through correctly. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to take these screws out, and then we're going to remove the parts with the tabs, and then we'll put the chair together. Let me get that done, and we'll come back to you. Wow, wow, man, this came out great. Look at the edge finishes on these, you know. Even though this was done in two passes, you can't see a witness like That's how good these machine frames are designed. Well, you know, my goal was to uh, create a prototype, and uh, man, it, mm -hmm. it came out really good. I'm really, really impressed by how well this machine cuts. You know, this is an entry-level CNC, as we call it, intro to CNC, and it really did a magnificent job. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you need more information, you can contact us at www.shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.